Hello everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Um, our lesson today is in Isaiah the cha chapter 6 and uh, 1 through 13, the verses. And uh, before we get started, um, I wanted to uh, just say a word about our new pastor. Um, it's Dr. Wayne Whitaker. And uh, he's been with us for a little while now. And I just wanted to say, if you're not listening to his messages online, you are missing out. He is a dynamic speaker. He's doing a wonderful job. And uh, uh, also, our, our uh, youth minister, Charlie Ottinger, is also doing a, a website, uh, a web uh, lesson, Youth Lit for the Youth. And... Uh, so if you uh, want to take a listen to him, he does a good job as well. And uh, so I just wanted to uh, share that with you and uh, and just put a plug in for them. They're doing a great job. Um, as I start the lesson today, I've got a lot of prayer requests that have been coming in. And, and we just want to try to remember some of those. I know we can't remember them all, but uh, for one, our former pastor, uh, Fred, uh, Cagle, uh, his mother has passed away, and his wife, Leuna, is uh, sick in the hospital. And uh, so just want to pray for them and uh, pray that the Lord will be with that family. And uh, uh, our uh, we have a, our, our Cindy, who we love dearly, her husband's in the hospital. Um, we have uh, other si other people who are sick and at home and in need of prayer. And, and Lord, we just want to especially remember each one. And uh, it's impossible for me to name them all, but the Lord knows who they are. And uh, so before we get started, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the lesson. And Lord, help me to teach it in a way that's easily understood. We lift those up, Lord, that are in need of prayer. And our hearts are heavy about some of them. And Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to be with them and uh, encourage them through their, the days ahead. Uh, got a good friend that called me just a few minutes ago and has a high, high blood pressure. And, and uh, Lord, she's very concerned about it. Uh, and I have family that is desperately in need of prayer for uh, sickness or illness or other reasons. And Lord, we just uh, we just pray that you'll be with them. Lord, I just ask that you be with the lesson, as I said. And Lord, uh, I have a small prayer request, Lord. It's not it's not a major thing for anybody but me. And Lord, I just uh, ask that uh, that we pray about it. And Lord, that uh, that you'll answer it according to your will. And, uh, Lord, we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. We pray for our pastor and pray for our church and pray for those that are listening and ask a special blessing upon them. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do for us. And we ask everything in your name. Amen. Um, our lesson uh, today begins uh, with Isaiah having a vision. And I'm going to read the very first verse uh, to start with. It says, In the year that King Uriah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Uh, his vision would have occurred, according to the Bible and according to uh, scholars, uh, around 740 B.C., before Christ. Uh, it was a time of prosperity for the uh, children of Israel, a time of prosperity in the southern kingdom of Judah. And uh, so things were going pretty well uh, for them right now, socially and economically, uh, for Israel and for Judah. Uh, when things were going well for them, uh, they had a tendency to become self-reliant. And uh, they uh, became morally lax. And uh, they had a tendency to forget about God during the good times. And that's usually what got them in trouble. Um, they kind of left him in the temple and just called on, on him when they needed something. And uh, as Christians, you know, we have to be careful too because uh, God is God every day, and uh, we need him every day, uh, not only when times uh, things go bad, and uh, we especially need him then, but we will hit our knees and we'll cry out to the Lord when things aren't good. And uh, then when things are going along pretty good, you know, we'll pray, but sometimes we don't get as serious and don't, remember to pray like we should. And uh, so uh, uh, we don't want to become complacent in our faith, uh, our walk with the Lord. We want it to be a daily uh, a daily thing. 
and uh, not let that become a pitfall for us. Um, you know, it's sometimes we want to say, hey, Lord, things are going good, pretty good right now. Uh, everybody's well. My bills are paid. Uh, no problems to speak of. So, Lord, just stay at church, and I'll see you on Sunday, and uh, I'll call you if I need you. And uh, doesn't it sound like us sometimes how we will do the Lord? And uh, But this time in the children of Israel is that kind of mentality. And uh, during a time of prosperity, they d chose to lead their own lives and do their own things. And, and it always got them into trouble, like I said. I believe God is a God of little things. And I mentioned in my prayer, I have a little thing right now I'm praying about. It's not important to anybody but me and my husband. And uh, it's not going to make or break the world if, if it does or doesn't happen. But it's just a little something I'm praying about. And uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, Casting all your cares on him, for he careth for you. And uh, in Isaiah, in uh, Th 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, The scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. And uh, so that's pray about everything. And uh, for us to be close to the Lord, we need to give it all to him. All the everyday things, all the little things, all the big things. Uh, not just our big problems. You know, he's a big God. He can... Uh, Sometimes we think, well, God's too big and he's too uh, important and for me to be bothering him with my little old mundane things. But he, he doesn't say that. He says, bring it all to me and, uh, and I'll listen and I'll help you. And uh, so uh, sometimes we think it has to be a big mountain that we can't move, you know, in order to call upon him. And uh, that's, that's not how he is. That's not the kind of God he is. Um, but anyway, going back to the lesson, Isaiah sees this vision of God, and he's in a great throne room, and he's surrounded by seraphims, and they have six wings, and uh, the seraphims were crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and uh, I looked up seraphims. I knew they were a, a biblical uh, being uh, that we read about and we hear about, a heavenly being. And uh, seraphims are considered to be the highest ranking celestial beings uh, in the hierarchy of angels. And uh, they're referred to in the Jewish scripture as the burning, uh, burning ones, the burning ones. So that makes you think they're bright and, and uh, you know, uh, flashy. Uh, they're guardians of the throne. They say they're guardians of the throne. But when Isaiah sees this vision, he just thinks, well, I, I, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And uh, he, is, uh, he is just so overwhelmed by what he sees. And uh, so he, is, uh, he says, you know, I, I'm not worthy. I am uh, a man of unclean lips. And uh, he recognizes his, and realizes his own sin and his own unworthiness. Then in verses 6 and 7, uh, the seraphim uh, bring, uh, one of the seraphims brings a hot coal and uh, places it on his mouth and announces that his sin is taken away and he's been purged from his sin. Uh, Isaiah has been purged, but what are the other people? You know, uh, it says he's unclean and he's living in a generation of unclean people. Uh, and uh, so the people of Israel and Judah uh, remain ignorant of their own sin and the danger that they're in from the sin that they're living in and uh, their own need for the removal of sin. Okay, in uh, verse 8, let's, let's read that. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Uh, Isaiah, you know, he has been overwhelmed by his vision. He has realized his uh, sinfulness. He has been cleansed of that. But when he recognizes it, he has been cleansed of that unrighteousness. And he recognizes what God has just done for him. And uh, so Isaiah... Um, Is, is is gone through a salvation type experience that the Lord has, has uh, forgiven him. And uh, so the Lord, uh, the, the people of Israel and Judah 
uh, remain ignorant of their sin and the danger that they were living in, like I said. And so Isaiah, uh, you know, experiencing this personal forgiveness that he now has, uh, he's willing to serve. And he responds to the Lord by saying, here am I, send me. A willingness to serve. That's what God wants from us. Uh, we all have different qualities. We have different talents. God-given abilities. Uh, we don't all have the same because God was wise enough that, to make each uh, one of us different. And uh, whatever gift we have, uh, we are to use it for the Lord. And uh, Isaiah's calling was to be a prophet. Uh, he was to go to the people of Israel, and it wasn't an easy job because they did not receive him well. They didn't listen to what he had to say. He, they rebelled against it. And uh, so it was not an easy task. But uh, Isaiah did something unique. It's something we don't do a whole lot. He volunteered. He volunteered, didn't he? And uh, he stepped up when uh, when he was needed. I read a... Uh, article about the state of Tennessee uh, and how we became known as the volunteer state. And uh, in June of 1812, the United States declared war against Great Britain, the War of 1812. And uh, Tennessee was situated in the nation's back country at that time. Uh, but when called upon, 1,500 Tennesseans showed up to fight. Uh, and in 1846, when our Secretary of State or Secretary of War at that time uh, asked Tennessee for 2,800 uh, soldiers uh, and to fight in the Mexican-American War and over 30,000 Tennesseans volunteered for that campaign. And uh, so we definitely have the history of being volunteers. And so maybe we t Tennesseans have a little bit of Isaiah living in us. I hope so, don't you? And uh, what a great, what a prideful, what a pride, uh, feeling pride for doing, stepping up and doing something. That's, that's a wonderful legacy. But Isaiah volunteered. He stepped up when God needed him. And uh, there is a quote by Neil Maxwell that I wanted to share. And it said, God does not begin by asking us about our ability but only our availability. And if we then prove our dependability, he will increase our capability. Uh, I don't care what we uh, think of ourselves. You know, the devil will try to say, you know, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, uh, you have no business doing that. Uh, you're, you know, uh, we aren't good enough, we aren't smart enough to do what God needs us to do. And we all battle with things like that in our lives. And, uh, but God can use us. Uh, first, we have to recognize our sinfulness, like uh, Isaiah did. We ask God to forgive us. You know, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. He cares and loves us that much. Uh, he desires our service. Uh, some people he uses in big ways, uh, like Isaiah. He was a, a, a great prophet. And, uh, but some people he uses in small ways to reach people and share his word, his forgiveness, his unique plan of salvation. He designed for any, he designed this plan of salvation for any who will accept it. Uh, remember, he is not concerned with our capabilities, just our availability. I want to say a side note here. Pray about your service. Uh, let God lead you. Uh, don't be pressured into doing uh, something that's not a good fit for you. Uh, you'll just get frustrated and be miserable. But it's like putting a square in a, in a round hole when you're not in that spot where God wants you to be and where he can use you. Uh, it won't work out well. Uh, but if you pray and ask the Lord, to use you, he will, and he will put you where you are most useful and, uh, and where you need to serve. Remember, we all have gifts and we all need to serve in some way. Uh, so that's important for us to, uh, to remember and to recognize uh, the Lord loves us. 
He did everything for us and he is doing everything for us. And we need to serve. We need to come back and serve him uh, in the best way that we can. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today and uh, please pray for those that are in need of prayer. We have uh, so many right now and uh, uh, just uh, continue to uh, uh, pray for our county. Uh, I know we had a big jump in cases this week and uh, I know that we want it to be over with, but we still need to be cautious. And and uh, the Lord protects us, but he also gives us a head and uh, a good mind to listen to those who uh, are smarter than us and give us recommendations. And we need to follow those. So uh, with uh, see, hope to see you all Sunday, those that can be here, there. And those who cannot be, we understand. And we sure miss you all. And uh, so uh, until next time, much love.